out of way development that won't surprise you among the pro Hamas agitators arrested for trespassing at Columbia University this week was Congresswoman Omar's daughter. Naturally, members of the squad, they rushed to her defense. They have long believed that if you hold far left opinions or hate Israel, well, you should be above the law. Anyway, here with Reaction, Israeli Special Ops veteran Aaron Cohn, the executive director of the Lawfare Project, Brooke Goldstein. You know, we have seen, and, and we saw this week, we saw it on, on campus, we've seen it in New York City, we have seen it throughout Europe, Brooke, we have seen it, uh, you know, gas the Jews, F the Jews in Australia. Words that I never thought I'd hear in my lifetime, and it breaks my heart. But it's in the halls of Congress. It's on college campuses. It is. It is. It is a real, real problem, and that is vile, repugnant, repulsive, virulent anti-Semitism. And and look at what we witnessed at an Ivy League institution this week in the protests in New York this week. Uh, I don't know what your reaction to it is. It breaks my heart that people are supporting radical Islamic terrorism. Not only does it break my heart, it concerns me greatly because I love this country and yet Israel being on the front lines of the war against theologically motivated terrorism, against Islamist terrorism, which is a war that we as Americans have been in since 9-11, but everybody seems to forget that after the Islamophobia mania campaign went around trying to silence and slander anybody who talked publicly about it. What authority does the United States have to dictate to Israel when we have the uh, uh, daughter of a sitting member of Congress arrested for being pro-Hamas when Nancy Pelosi goes on record saying that she doesn't want to support arming Israel after, after October the 7th, but supports uh, lifting sanctions on Iran that was entirely responsible for October the 7th. I think the state of affairs is very sad right now, and we are funding an enemy that we are at war with, both without and within. The Department of Education is now funding all of the radicalization happening on American college campuses. We can't even control the thousands of people who are on American streets protesting for Hamas, for Hezbollah, against America. So I don't think we have any authority to dictate to Israel. We should thank Israel. And I will end with this. I'm so glad that you mentioned before how targeted Israel's attack was with three missiles. Israel has no interest in targeting civilians, has no interest in igniting a regional war, and every interest in peace in the Middle East and de-arming uh, the greatest threat to stability, which is the mullahs and the Islamic regime of Iran. Yeah, uh, and, and you make a great point. Aaron, let me go to you. Uh, I was watching you on with Trace last night. I thought you did a great job, had amazing analysis. Let me go back to the, the military accomplishment uh, as Israel sadly was forced to go it alone. I think it's an embarrassing moment for our country. Uh, Israel s did stand with America after 9-11. We should have stood with them in their war on terror. They lost nearly, what, 1,200 people. How many Israelis were held hostage? How many women were raped? How many babies had their heads chopped off? Uh, how many Americans also were taken hostage? But, but the sheer success and the deep penetration into Iranian territory was beyond impressive to me. Uh, I know it didn't surprise you. We have seen past success of the, of the Israeli military, uh, but this took on a, a great significance to me. I want to get your reaction to it. Well, Sean, uh, I agree with you 100 percent. And what I was diving into last night and what I'm going to continue to pontificate here is the fact that uh, Israel's got a lot of experience uh, uh, in dealing with uh, selective operations, which is what last night was. And the Iranians can try and downplay this, but the fact is, is they're just trying to backhatch this in order to save face, to cover up for their military vulnerabilities, which Israel, I believe, is going to enter into a low-intensity conflict. We're going to see some more of this. Israel hasn't even responded to what they did last night. The reason why is because Israel does its best work in the vanguard, Sean. And I don't believe that uh, Bibi Netanyahu, who's one of our warrior sons, served in our uh, Seret Matkal, or our General Staff Reconnaissance Unit, he doesn't have the luxury of asking for permission when it comes to the survival 
of our people. And we're dealing with six million leaders here. They all serve in the military, and uh, they know the price that we pay. In Hebrew, we say, which means we pay a very high price to have that Jewish state. And while we support our Americans and we appreciate the help that we had with defusing those 350 plus missiles and suicide drones that were fired into Israel, Iran made a very big mistake because I'll tell you this, Sean, Israel is a master at targeted assassinations and we will take out anybody who stands in the way of our survival. And we're gonna continue to see more of this quietly, but Iran is the number one threat. They fund and trained Hamas, bonuses for coming to Iran to learn booby traps, to learn through that entire Nukba unit, which is the unit that raped and killed those 1,300 people in, just outside of Gaza in the southern portion, was trained in Iran. Hezbollah, a constant menace on the northern border, which Israel will, is going to continue to deal with selectively, also part of that Iran access. The sooner the U.S. gets on board, with taking out Iran and treating them as a nuclear threat, like the general said, the sooner they will, there will be peace and stability in the region. And it's a matter of signaling. You cannot allow the IRGC to get close to a nuclear weapon. And we know that in Israel, we don't have the luxury to waste time. For every second we waste, another innocent person can be killed. That's the first thing they teach you in the counterterrorism oh. special operations school. So we don't have time. We're gonna, you're going to continue to see Israel doing more of this. You know, if, if I had any influence in the region, I never will. But if a coalition of the U.S. and Israel and Egypt and Jordan and the Saudis and the Emirates uh, recognize the truth that you just spoke, uh, that should be done expeditiously. Otherwise, we could have a Holocaust in our lifetime. We better take Sean, that we seriously. Recognize the, we recognize the truth that you speak, and we appreciate you. All right, we Amen. appreciate you. And um, the Israelis, uh, I'm proud of them last night. They showed a lot of strength and a lot of guts. And sadly, the U.S. abandoned them under Joe Biden.